Now let's dive deeper into uh, politics, especially with the 2023 general election drawing closer. Well, Nigeria has officially entered its politicking season. Political parties are restructuring and trying to put their houses in order. Aspirants are hopeful as many party primaries are taking place this week to identify the flag bearers. The Independence National Electoral Commission has advised political parties to adhere strictly to internal democracy and electoral laws in the conduct of their primaries. And joining me now to discuss this from Abuja is the former acting national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, uh, Hilad Eta. Thank you so much for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much. So looking at this issue of Thank internal uh, democracy, absolutely. Uh, looking at this issue uh, now uh, from, you know, experience, you made the news uh, several years, especially in 2020, looking at your court uh, battles with the APC that you still belong to. Uh, let's begin that way now. At a point, it was even said that you had been expelled. Tell us how the issue was resolved. Well, um, thank you for having me once again. Um, the issues have naturally abetted. Uh, I, I do not think uh, it was true that from the records of the party I, I was expelled. Uh, if you, the process is that in any normal circumstance, if you have a member expelled from any organization, that, that member will be communicated uh, with such action, uh, that uh, that is not uh, the case in in my in my situation. So I remain, uh, as I have always been, a member of the All Progressives Congress. Right, and um, with the primary uh, elections in the PDP uh, specifically. Uh, what are your expectations? You're also running for um, governor in Cross River State. Uh, so, so what are your expectations, even as we monitor the process from our end here? Well, first of all, I'm uh, just like any other politician, an incurable, incurable optimist, believing uh, that the process of internal democracy will be honed in such a manner <clears throat> that the preponderance of the membership of, of the various parties uh, across the political horizon will feel, will have a feeling of inclusiveness, will have a feeling uh, that they belong to the various political parties. Uh, I am one of those who um, have always fought for uh, proper uh, internal democracy to be entrenched in the various political formations so that uh, the masses, the people who would want to participate in the uh, leadership engineering of Nigeria will feel free to do so and will feel um, uh, a part of the process. Uh, that, that, that will even deepen um, uh, the process of selection of leaders in Nigeria. Unfortunately, unfortunately that is not the case across board. Um, uh, we we need to to hold back, you know, and and properly assess uh, why it is impossible for the Nigerian political formations to have internal democracy, uh, you know, as 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 it is required in democracy. Uh, it, it is a sad thing, and I I truly believe that we must um, this box must be ticked for us to have uh, a proper uh, democracy in Nigeria. It, it was even said, you know, using your experience uh, still, uh, and it's, it's also good that I'm even talking with you because this is a subject that I believe you can relate well with, uh, talking about internal democracy. Uh, you once had, you know, strong views about, you know, feelings of marginalization and injustice uh, leveled against you. Uh, omitted against you by uh, the party. W what efforts have been put in place now to be sure that, you know, no one else goes through, um, you know, the experience that you, you, you know, strongly expressed then and even now that another calendar is here upon us? 
Well, well, my experience, like the experiences of others, uh, is part of the learning, the learning process uh, that uh, our country, unfortunately, must go through. We, we cannot arrive at the, uh, at the destination uh, that we all desire um, uh, be, uh, without these kinds of experiences, these pains, these sacrifices that some people must make. I, I have um, suffered, I have suffered grave, uh, grave injustice, uh, like my colleagues in the NWC. Um, just like a lot of other people have suffered, uh, even worse fates in, in the political process of Nigeria. Uh, I put it down to, to us uh, being part of the learning curve uh, in the uh, democratic experience of Nigeria. Uh, but my fear is that we are just running, when it comes to uh, the very serious matter of internal democracy, we are running in circles, you know. Uh, we haven't really improved. I, I, I started politics as a youngster. And um, I noticed that in 1999, the former president of the country, uh, President uh, Olusegun Obasanjo, introduced uh, policies that negated the ideals of internal democracy and made it almost impossible uh, for, for democ uh, internal democracy uh, processes to be interested in the various parties. Um, and today, um, circle after uh, election circles, we have a situation where um, the situation has further, uh, has further dipped instead of, uh, of uh, the process being enhanced. So uh, I, I call on all, all of us not to sit on the bylines and, and only bemoan um, our faith when we suffer these things. That we should come together as politicians, we should come together as Nigerians and begin to tackle the very serious issues of internal democracy. Uh, because um, my experience and my summation of what has happened in the past few years in Nigeria is that as we continue in the kind of, uh, in the kind of processes that we have today in the various political parties, we alienate we alienate our people. And so, instead of uh, our democracy uh, being uh, an inclusive process, we have um, excluded most of the people that should be in the process. And we continue to do this. It continues to get worse um, at every um, election cycle. Uh, cycle. And um, I, my, my, my honest intervention is that we need uh, to pay a lot of attention to this. And even as, uh, like you rightly said, life indeed is all about, um, you know, learning. We learn every day. And, of course, for the... Uh the waters of, of politics, of, of course, you, sh you should know better. But uh, would you, you know, truly say to yourself that you have moved on with this, um, with you sticking your neck out, uh, you know, to you know, take a bite, so to speak, at the governorship race, even within your party? Have you moved on or are you still in court? No, um, in, in my case, I, I did not, uh, I did not, purchased the form, not because I couldn't purchase the form, but I found it ridiculous uh, that um, my party would set um, the kind of monetary requirement uh, for, for seeking nomination into the office of the governor. And I couldn't justify, I couldn't justify that, kind of, uh, uh, that kind of situation uh, because I have computed the salary of uh, a governor, and in over four years, I believe that uh, it is impossible for the governor uh, to to invest that kind of money in just the purchase of nomination form, and not not resort to putting his hand in the commonwealth of the people. And I, I am not cut out for that kind of uh, that kind of situation. I'm not. I will not do that. And because I would not do that, I would not attempt. Uh, and, and it is not that I, I couldn't have pulled together the resources to do this. 
Uh, but let me also tell you, uh, there was uh, this school of thought, or there is this school of thought that we need to um, uh, we need to encourage crowdfunding. Now, crowdfunding in a political uh, climate like that of our own is almost impossible because the people believe, and this is true, the people believe that those who are in power or those who seek power are not to be helped uh, financially. That uh, actually the reverse is the case. Uh, there is a lot of demand from those who seek political offices. So the culture of crowdfunding has not come to Nigeria yet and is not, to, is not about to come in the nearest future. So it means that if you're going to pursue a political contest, if you're going to pursue a particular political office, all the financial requirement and monetary requirement that, uh, that, that is for the purpose of, the, uh, of that office must be borne by those who desire such uh, offices. And for me, um, it, 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 is not, it is not something that settles in my mind very well. There are a lot of people who think otherwise, and they are, they, are, they are welcome to their thoughts. But that is my thought. So I did, I did not purchase the form, so I am not in the race. I am not in the race. Um, my, my, singular, my singular job at this time, my purpose at this time to make sure, is to make sure that Tasiwadu Bola Ahmed Tinibu becomes the president of Nigeria. And uh, in so doing, he has to, first of all, uh, win the ticket of our party and become the flag bearer of the party. All right. Thanks a lot for the clarification, uh, Hilad Etta. Let me put you on hold, uh, if you will. There's an essential uh, break that we must take uh, from our end. Please stay with us. You're watching TVC Breakfast. You're watching TVC Breakfast. I've been speaking with the former acting national chairman of the All Progressives Party, Chief Hilliard Etta. Thanks so much for uh, staying on with us. But let me get further clarity uh, from you as to the status uh, of your the suit you instituted against the APC. Now that, um, you know, though there may still be some issues for you within the party, but did you settle out of court or are you still in court? Um, I, I, would like, I would like to to not go into that matter. Like they said that the lawyers have told us that uh, if you go into these matters, it becomes subjudice. I, I'll try to stay away from it for now, if you will have me do so. But how much, uh, you know, would you also say, how, how has the court, you know, helped in, you know, sanitizing the system, intervening in... Um, in, in grouses or alleged grouses between members and their party. You know, you being a, a keen observer and part, and part of, you know, the process in politics, with the intervention of the court always as a form of last uh, resort on the part of members, so to speak, has it, you know, really helped um, the course of the party or the course of the member involved? Well, uh, let me say that in certain cases, I mean, there are so many cases that have gone to court uh, that has helped in deepening our democracy, uh, the, especially um, with our national constitution that had a lot of lacunas, and the court has come to fill those lacunas in certain areas. Uh, you remember that at one point, it was the place of the parties to replace if, if you had won your primaries or so to speak, the party could go to INEC and change your name at will. It was the court that stopped that. So there are so many things that the court has done to deepen our democracy and to stabilize, uh, to stabilize the process. I can also say that the court, the court also hasn't helped in so many ways. Um, there are cases that have lapsed over time, you know, they, you have cases that should be time bad, you know, should be decided within a particular mm -hmm. time frame. Mm -hmm. You have a situation where the cases will just um, run until it lapses uh, over time. So there, there are so many things um, that the justice system 
could have done to help us deepen our democracy that has not been done. But there are so many things that all, they have also done that has helped in deepening our democracy. So you could say that it is work in progress. Um, uh, we expect a lot more from the justice system, but they also have done a lot uh, to help uh, deepen our democracy. Even in the APC, that you're, you're a keen a stakeholder uh, or an active stakeholder in, uh, for you, uh, as you keep you know, expressing that it is indeed a learning curve for everyone indeed, is there more clarity than it was before now uh, as to you know, how aggrieved members can channel their, their grievances? Is there clarity from, from everyone or to be followed uh, in case of disputes or grievances? Uh, well, we have had in our party where different kinds of uh, sanctions have been given to different kinds of people who have committed the same crime. And, um, and in crime, I mean, uh, especially going to court. We have had people go to court and the party will gloss over it. And others have gone to court and they have sanctioned them on, on so many instances like that. Um, I, I, I think that we need to take party administration very seriously. I think that we need to, to it is time that the political parties begin to, even those in the ruling party, even the political parties uh, who are in, in rulership, uh, we need to begin a divorce some, of some sort of the, very, of the two institutions, the institutions of government and the institutions of the party, so that the party itself will begin to grow, make its mistakes and grow and become a strong institution. Because what we have today in Nigeria is that because we have strong men in government, they have... Um, uh, this has, because of the kind of relationship that we have, this relationship that you cannot, this, I call it um, uh, a CMS uh, relationship. It has right. not, we've not been able to separate the two. These, we have strong, we have strong people in government who have um, uh, overwhelmed and intimidated the parties into submission. And this is not good for democracy. The parties ought to be the custodian of the ideals and the ideas uh, of, of, of party members as different from the government that is supposed to implement these ideas. The two institutions are, cannot be one. They should not be one. The two institutions be, uh, should be allowed to grow, make its mistakes, and firm up and become strong institutions. We, if we that have that, then we can have a situation where you will not have a situation where these kinds of things uh, happen. In, in the Nigerian political uh, process today, if the party were to take a decision, a decision that will affect the generality of the membership of the party, even after taking such decisions at the apex um, structures of the party, they will now, uh, it, is, it is common for you to hear that they are now waiting for the approval of a strong man in government that ought not to be to be so. The party ought to take decisions that will even affect the strong man in government. So, so uh, there are there are things that we must look at and 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 begin to implement and begin to ask for bring it to the table for conversation and begin to act on them, so that the parties will become what they use. You know, before 1999, the parties were quite strong. In fact, at the point, it was almost as strong as government. But after 1999, we have been descending down the hill. Mm. And we need to stop that descent okay. and right. uh, begin to uh, build ourselves up. All, all right. So, so the special convention is uh, really, really close. Uh, hopefully to bring a climax uh, to all uh, you know, the, the great expectations for everyone. For the humongous uh, number of presidential aspirants from within the party, this has drawn um, you know, speculations as to how will the party go about it. So there is a screening, we all know. Uh, but you've also, you know, told us about your leanings uh, at this time. So 
I don't know how how is this going to to work out uh, because people have also said that this may just um, if the party doesn't work against it this may just you know further divide the party so how does the party avoid how does the party how does the party avoid you know you know divisions uh, even as we prepare for the presidential uh, primary and of course the eventualities okay are, are you are you, um, uh, should I answer about my preference or I should delve on the matter of uh, the number of presidential if aspects? You, if you want to talk about, if you want to talk further about your, your preference, you, you're free to. But I'm asking now about the number of presidential aspirants. Now, of course, this naturally will spring up those who are for and against them and of course we all know that all these persons are members of the party but is this is is this normal or like people have said could this you know divide the party if care proper care isn't taken by the party's leadership okay let me start by saying that um i like uh, a legion of our party members are in support of the candidature of Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu for so many reasons. And mine is, I'll reduce mine to just three. Um, his superintendence of Lagos and what he has transformed Lagos into, uh, of course, uh, proves his capacity. And none of the 28 people who have bought forms, none of them can present such a credential. That is number one. Number two is that over time, over from the times of Nadeko, from the times of uh, his becoming the governor, he has shown that he is a unifier. And we need a unifier for a president at this point. The, the number three is flowing, is, is flowing from the number one and the number two, which is that uh, the generality of the membership of our party have suffered uh, from a flawed uh, system of reward, a flawed system of reward. And we do know, all of us do know, that Asiwaju is a great rewarder of loyalty and hard work. Now, those are the three things I have made for my support for Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu. And I can speak the same for the generality of the members of our party. Having said so, I will come now to the number of people that have purchased forms in our party. It's a new phenomenon, and we need, like I, I have said in various interviews, that we need to study this new phenomenon. But one of the schools of thought that I buy into is that the prospect of uh, victory and the prospect of success uh, on the platform of our party is what is driving uh, the, the, the traffic uh, to the party uh, with regards to the procurement of forms uh, uh, of these very many people that have come out to, to, to run for the presidency. Um, whether it will uh, bring this unity and crack in the party, it is very simple. If the party bothers to, um, to institute um, to display, uh, to, um, to organize a free, fair, and transparent primaries process, there will never be a crack. Because we know that if you lose elections through these kinds of process, or through this kind of process, then you will truly know the preference of the people. And so you cannot fight against the dictates and the preference of the people. The only problem that may come will be as a result of any attempt to skew or to, um, to undermine the process of the primaries. If this is done, then one uh, can, be too sh can be sure that uh, a lot of people will not want uh, to live with the results or the outcomes or the consequences of such um, uh, a, a process. So um, the, own, the, the, the responsibility uh, uh, is on the party. The, the party must show that it is capable of organizing 
free, fair, transparent primaries for all the presidential aspirants. All right. Our people are the, the, the number of people to vote in that primary is just 2,322. Delegates. You can line up 2,322 people to vote for the 28 people. They will count it, and whoever comes stops, and whoever meets the requirement of the constitution of the party is declared the winner of the process. It is as right. simple as that. All right. Uh, um, Chief Etel will continue this conversation after the break. Uh, this also we need to take. Thank you for your understanding. Please stay with us. Thanks a lot for staying with uh, TVC Breakfast. My guest this time has been the former acting national uh, chairman of the APC, Hilad Eta, who is in Abuja uh, for this, uh, the purpose of this interview. We thank you for uh, holding on, uh, you know, to, you know, get more perspectives uh, from you, even as the APC uh, prepares for its special convention on Sunday and Monday. Of course, uh, screening is set to... Uh, um, you know, to start soon in that regard. But looking at the bigger picture, we, we might still narrow it down now to the APC itself. Looking at the bigger picture and your your, your preference uh, in as flag bearer of the APC, how do you respond to inquiries, genuine ones even and, and otherwise, as to whether the party has what it takes to win eventually? Well, thank you very much. Uh, the party has what it needs to win this election. And that is the candidature of Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu. Look, um, I, I say this everywhere that I go to. When you, re when you present his report card in Lagos, others pale into insignificance. Whether it is in APC or in PDP, now, um, just yesterday, we learned uh, that uh, a foremost presidential aspirant in the PDP has um, withdrawn from the presidential race and um, has even resigned from the PDP. Now, take that, just oppose that with what happened in 2003, uh, when uh, the PDP swept away the the AD governors in the Southwest, who stood back and rebuilt the AD into AC, from AC into ACN, and took, took back the Southwest, and now um, calibrated with the CPC and the AMPP to morph the ACN into the APC, and won the elections in 2015, retained government in 2019, that person is able, very capable, of winning the general elections in 2023. Now, Nigerians will be presented with a choice of Asiwaju and any other person that will be presented by the PDP. And I have looked at all those who are contesting under the platform of the APC. I believe that Nigerians will look at his contributions to the democratic development of Nigeria. I know that Nigerians will look at his contributions um, over his transformation of Lagos from the 18th economy in Africa to the third largest economy in Africa today. Uh, Nigerians will um, look for a man who has uh, deep experience both in private and public governance. Nigerians will look for a man who will unite the country. Nigerians will look for a man who will expand the space for the energies of our youths to be released. And that man is Asiwaju Bola Ametinibu. Um, let me assure you that we of the APC here, we know that um, these elections of 2023 will be akin to the elections of 1998 uh, with MK Wabula. I, I, I see the similarities. I see, um, I see that Asiwaju, even Asiwaju himself, 
cannot stop a tenable victory. I, I read that somewhere in the social media yesterday, and it captured the minds of those who have been uh, keen watchers and keen um, participants in the Nigerian political experience. The Asiwaju, as we know him today, cannot stop Etinibu from winning not just the primaries of the party, but even the elections of 2023. Right, but what do you also, you know, make of, you know, the speculations that uh, despite this, um, the animosity of um, aspirants, uh, the, the number of aspirants, uh, you know, eyeing the position of flag bearer, so to speak, uh, how do you, you know, weigh the speculations that there might or there will, you know, be a consensus candidate? Well, um... You know there are different methods of 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 selecting uh, a candidate of the party. There is the method of uh, direct primaries, indirect primaries. Even the one that uh, uh, has become forgotten in the Nigerian political uh, political uh, political currency uh, affirmation, and then you have consensus. You know people keep talking about consensus without getting into the definition of consensus, at least as we have it in the Electoral Act. Uh, what we have in the Electoral Act is that all aspirants must agree by writing that one, per one of them becomes the consensus candidate of, 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 of whether the party or, or whatever contest that you have. Well, um, we have campaigned around the country. We have gone to all the regions of Nigeria uh, to, to sell the candidature of Ahmed Bola Chinibu. Now, we are not interested, uh, the, the, the camp of Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Chinibu is not interested in uh, consensus. Uh, uh, and uh, if the, the when if it gets to a point that we are interested, our principal will come and address Nigerians and say, "I am interested." For now, we are ready. We have mobilized our supporters. We have mobilized our structures across the country to to for the victory of Asiwaju uh, in in the primaries uh, of of Sunday and Monday. So that, that is where we are at this point. We are not uh, talking, we are not uh, in any conversation about a consensus. If uh, you look at the opposition party... Uh, and and, and, and uh, please, uh, right. let me just end by saying okay. that... Um, let me just say, end by saying that um, we are very many. We are very many across the length and breadth of the country. All right. The point is, is noted, uh, of course. But then if you look at um, the PDP, you alluded to uh, a contender as that yesterday, up until yesterday, uh, that is now, who has now withdrawn uh, from the party or, with, or left the PDP and all that. Uh, looking at the shock, looking at the varying reactions of Peter Obi leaving the PDP, uh, what, what do you further make of it and if you look at your own party now uh, is this likely to be replicated in the party uh, well uh, uh, you know i i just oppose his actions with the actions of asiwaju in 2003 um you remember that uh peter will be left the abga for pdp and today he has left the PDP. Uh, we are not sure where he's going to. Uh, but this is a man that has been touted by a lot of people as the one that is, um, that is fit to be our president. I'd I like to say this. Uh, you, you need a man with stability of mind. You know, you need a man who has a uh, staying power. Because difficulties will come. Challenges will come. It is part of leadership, and you must, in times of crisis and in times of of uncertainties and in times of challenges, 
a, a leader must stand up and be counted. Uh, uh, that is the kind of man uh, we present to Nigerians. That is the man, that is Asiwaju uh, of Africa, Asiwaju the uh, Jarabad of the universe. Uh, he has shown through his political trajectory okay. that you can count on him All right. in times of crisis, in times... Yes. All right. Uh, Helen Detta, former acting national chairman of the APC, we thank you so much, you know, for all your contributions uh, and insights on TVC Breakfast this morning, and we wish you uh, the best in all your endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.